Hi, my name's Mark, one of the pastors at Trillium. There's an interesting feature in the Old Testament. It's the name of God. We, we translate it in English as Yahweh. It, come, it comes from the Hebrew word Hayah, to be. It's that moment when Moses goes up to the side of the mountain. He sees the burning bush. He enters in that holy ground, has a conversation with God, and in the conversation he asks for God's name. And it's a variation on Hayah. It gets translated, I will be what I will be, or I am that I am. And it, it's vocalized as Yahweh. I remember re reading about a Presbyterian minister who had ALS, and as his ability to speak diminished, in fact ended, he could only vocalize his breath. And, and he, he says, when he was typing out on his computer, which he could still do, that he recognized that ha and Yahweh are about breathing. It's the sound of breath. The name of God of the Old Testament is the sound of us breathing. Yahweh, Yahweh. And it's something I've been thinking about ever since. Every time I breathe, in a sense, I'm giving utterance to the name of God. I'm breathing a prayer into existence. Now, I don't really think about my breathing that much. Not nearly the way I should or could, at least. I don't realize that every breath is a sacred moment a chance for prayer, supplication, a chance to celebrate, to give homage to, to give thanks for the gift of life, a chance to communicate with my Creator. It's a common feature in many languages, especially ancient languages, that the, the word for breath and wind and spirit, life force, is the same. It's true in Hebrew, ruach, it's true in Greek, pneuma, it's true in Sanskrit, the oldest of all Indian languages, prana. The ancients understood the link between breath and the wind and the sacred energy of life. Spirit. Yeah, modern people, we, we kind of forget about that. There is a famous saying, familiarity breeds contempt. I, I found an interesting explanation online. It says, extensive knowledge of or close association with someone or something leads to a loss of respect for them or it. Now, I'm thinking of just how tragic that notion is. Familiarity breeds contempt. Uh, on, on the level that we're talking about today, it means that we hold the familiar of our own lives, the familiar patterns, the common experiences in contempt in life. You know, like the vacuuming you do all the time, hopefully, you know, the brushing of our teeth, you know, the washing of the dishes, all the mundane, uh, cumbersome tasks that we have to do day in and day out to make life possible. They may be something that's necessary. They're certainly endured. They rarely hold our heart's attention. And yet, where do we think we're going to meet the living Christ? But in the familiar. Where do we, th we think we're, go we're going to wake up spiritually in life except in the common tasks, the familiar tasks we engage in? There's this temptation to direct our attention to the mountaintop or those special moments in life, thinking that they hold special opportunities for us. But I don't think that's the case. I think it's in the familiar most of all that we're most likely to meet God and to wake up to love. Now, that's something that Jesus understood, I think, very deeply. I think he understood this profoundly. And we pray that we don't betray the moment in our lives. We need to repeat God's name in and out through our days. And we do so in our breath. As we breathe in and breathe out, we are giving voice to the sacred name of God and all we do. We can wake up anywhere, in truth, of course. We can wake up anywhere because the sacred name of God goes with us in every place we go, in and through our breath. Every dream the world holds dear has suddenly gone by. And where it seemed to stand, you find a star, a miracle of grace. The sick arise healed of their sickly thoughts. The blind see, the deaf hear. The sorrowful find solace and fulfillment in life. We give thanks that in the sacredness of our breath and in the voicing of God's holy name, we find 
ultimately the tears of sadness replaced, replaced by the joys of laughter in our lives. This is an opportunity that Jesus invites us to and it can happen right now in this moment. Every breath is a sacred moment that we, we give utterance to. Every breath is a sacred moment to give voice to our celebration of life. Every breath that we have is an opportunity to utter the sacred name of God.